How do you start a painting? And how do you finish one? Do you plan out everything from the beginning? Or do you go with the flow and work intuitively? And what about all that stuff that goes on in the middle? What is the process exactly? In this video, I'll try and answer those questions and lift the curtain on my own process. I started making some expressive marks using charcoal and water and sealed everything really well before continuing. I also added some thin layers of black acrylic ink and went ahead and did some more charcoal marks, expressive marks. I believe there are as many different ways to start a painting as there are artists. And while we might start out painting in one way, our approach will most likely change over the years and end up somewhere else. In fact, that is probably the most common way. We adjust our way of working as we gain more experience and skills. And as we gain more experience and try different things, we'll start to develop a favorite way of working. I think I've tried it all. I tried having a clear vision of the finished painting and working very structured to get there from start to finish with that goal in mind. But I also realized that the paintings that were planned out meticulously felt a bit forced and lacked that spark of life I love and admire in other artists' work. So working very structured was not the answer for me. So I also tried painting intuitively without a clear idea or direction. In those paintings, I never really got to finish them. I kept adding layers and layers and painting over areas. And time went by and the paintings never felt resolved or finished. So working completely intuitively uh, with no clear goal or end in mind wasn't the answer either. So what I came to believe was that the answer must lie somewhere in between those two ways of working. My painting process now is a mix between the two. Now when I paint, I like to have a loose idea of where the painting is going. And I usually set up with a limited color palette and have an overall idea of the composition. I also like to write down a few words or sentences that will keep me on track to how I want the painting to feel when it is finished. That might sound strange. What do you mean how the painting feels? But bear with me. I will write down some words, usually a sentence, uh, a sentence that could go something like this. I want my painting to feel like an embrace of a warm summer evening in the north of Denmark. It's okay that this does not make any sense to anyone else, but as long as I know what I mean, I will let that feeling guide me. So I have sort of a loose plan or direction when I start the painting. But I also make sure I leave room to explore ideas and try some things during the painting process. And once in a while I will check in to see if I'm getting closer to that feeling or if I'm moving away from it. I think it's natural for the painting process to change and develop through the years. 
as we move forward on our painting journey. It's usually quite subtle and we might not notice it before we look back at some of our older work. It's, um, it's just like seeing some of my own handwriting from when I was a teenager. I do recognize it as my own handwriting, but I also see that it has changed. It is different, but it's still my handwriting. I think a lot of times painting feels difficult because we want to try and control everything. We want to control the process and the outcome. But this control is actually limiting us by stifling our creativity. Usually we have a very specific idea of the outcome or we might have a preconceived idea of the proper way to paint. I found that uh, if everything is very set in stone and I know exactly how I want the finished painting to look, I usually run into trouble. I realized I got more frustrated when I focused too much on how I wanted the finished painting to look. I must leave room for some risk-taking and creativity. But it's so hard to let go, I hear you say. Yes, we do run the risk of losing the good bits, but we potentially gain something so much more by being brave. I also realized that every time I have been brave enough to experiment and try that big mark or that unusual color combination, something outside my comfort zone, I have actually grown as a painter. I did not know these two paintings were going to turn out like this uh, when I started out. From the beginning, I had an idea and I allowed it to develop over the course of many weeks. If you found this video helpful, I want to direct you to my free guide, Five Proven Ways to Loosen Up Your Painting Style. In the guide, I share five of the most transformative ways to loosen up and strengthen your paintings. And these are ways I use myself all the time in my painting practice. Download the free guide and start implementing the steps today to improve and move forward on your painting journey. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.